and I'm back. Hope you had a great time right now. We got a new one for you from your boy, George Carlin. We all know he's a funny dude. If he was alive today, people would be like, my man, you was like so on point. So you know what? Let's get straight to it. Let me go ahead and press play. But say what you want about America, land of the free, home of the brave. We got some dumb ass motherfuckers floating around this country. <laughs> dumb ass motherfuckers, you know? Yeah. Well, you can go on YouTube and see a whole bunch of what he's saying. You can walk outside and see that all day. He is not lying. Now, obviously, that doesn't include this audience. I understand that. <laughs> you seem intelligent and perceptive, but the rest of them, holy jumping fucking shitballs. <laughs> Dumb. Not the audience, though. Y'all cool. We, we love the audience. More than a second coat of paint. <laughs> And this ain't just ranting and raving. This ain't just blowing off steam. I got a little evidence to support my claim. It just seems to me, seems to me, that only a really low IQ population could have taken this beautiful continent, this magnificent American landscape that we inherited. Well, actually, we stole it from the Mexicans and the Indians, but <laughs> hey, it was nice when we stole it. It looked pretty good. It was pristine. Hmm. Paradise. Have you seen it lately? Have you taken a good look at it lately? It's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Only a nation of unenlightened half-wits could have taken this beautiful place and turned it into what it is today, a shopping mall. A big fucking shopping mall. You're not lying. Everywhere you go, something is for sale. There's a shop everywhere you go. You know that? That's all you got. That's all you've got here, folks. Mile after mile of mall after mall. Many, many malls. Major malls and mini malls. They put the mini malls in between the major malls. And in between the mini malls, they put the mini marts. And in between the mini marts, you got the car lots, gas stations, muffler shops, laundromats, cheap hotels, fast food joints, strip clubs, and dirty bookstores. America the Beautiful, one big transcontinental commercial cesspool. And how do the people feel about all this? How do the people feel about living in a coast-to-coast -coast shopping mall? Well, they think it's just fucking dandy <laughs> we all program that's why people can't pay attention to something they're part of for some weird reason they think it is cool as can be because americans love the mall they love the mall that's where they get to satisfy their two most prominent addictions at the same time shopping and eating Millions of semi-conscious Americans, day after day, shuffling through the malls, shopping and eating, especially eating. Americans love to eat. They are, they are fatally attracted to the slow death of fast food. Hot dogs, corn dogs, triple bacon, cheeseburgers, deep fried butter, dipped in pork fat and cheese whiz, mayonnaise soaked, barbecued mozzarella, patty melts. <laughs> Americans will eat anything. Damn, that's, that's just too much, man. Like, y'all don't care about the arteries? My goodness. Anything, anything. If you were selling sauteed raccoons assholes on a stick. <laughs> He's not lying. It'll be a long line around the block. Americans would buy them and eat them. Especially if you dipped them in butter and put a little salsa on them. <laughs> this country is big time, pig time. Forget the bald eagle. You know what the national emblem of this country ought to be? A big bowl of macaroni and cheese. <laughs> A big bowl, because everything in this country is king size. King size, <laughs> extra large, and super jumbo. Especially the fucking people. <laughs> Have you seen some of the people in this country? Have you taken a good look at some of these big, fat motherfuckers walking around? <laughs> big, fat motherfuckers. Come on, come on. We're not body shaming anybody, but you do got a point, man. We got to snap out of it. Come on, health is wealth, baby. Oh, my God. Huge piles of redundant protoplasm lumbering through the malls like a fleet of interstate buses. The people in this country are immense, massive bellies, monstrous thighs, and big fat fucking asses. And if you stand there for a minute and you look at one of them, you look at one of them, you, you, you begin to wonder, how does this woman take a shit? How does she... <laughs> Yo, his mind is crazy. I mess with George. George official. She shit. Oh, another thing. R.I.P. George, man. Even more frightening. How does she wipe her ass? 
Can she even locate her asshole? She must require assistance. Are paramedics trained in this field? And standing right next to her, of course, with a plate full of nachos and a mouthful of pie is her clueless fucking husband, Joe Sixpack. With his monstrous swollen beer belly hanging dangerously out over his belt, beer belt buckle, this guy ain't seen his dick since the Nixon administration. <laughs> and if you stand there and you look at the two of them, you begin to wonder to yourself, do these people fuck? <laughs> is this man actually capable of fucking this woman? You'd be surprised. There's somebody for everyone, though, unfortunately and fortunately. It doesn't seem structurally possible that these two people could achieve penetration. Maybe they're in that Cirque du Soleil or something. <laughs> Telling you, the people in this country, are every half, every, every one of them is 50 pounds overweight. They are gargantuan. And in the summertime, God help us. Oh, man. In the summertime, they all... He's not playing. Summertime is like, people don't even care how they look anymore. It's like, we live in a different planet sometimes. I want to wear short pants. Jesus, Lord, protector of all that is good and holy, deliver me from fat people in short pants. They all got short pants, big bellies, fat thighs, and dumb kids. Short pants, big bellies, fat thighs, and dumb kids. Every one of them's got two dumbass kids with them. And the whole family is wearing t-shirts, and every one of them's got the same t-shirt. I'm with stupid. <laughs> Apparently in this country, the stupids are an extended family. And besides wearing them t-shirts, everyone in the family's got on a backpack. They got a backpack strapped to their back so they can carry around lots of stupid shit. And the reason they got to carry their stupid shit strapped to their backs is because their hands must remain free at all times to hold food. And to get that food up to the mouth where it gets shoveled in with all the rest of the disgusting shit they ate that day. Yeah. He got no hose bar. <laughs> Another reason for the backpacks is these people are going to buy even more stupid shit. They ain't got enough stupid shit at home. They just had a stupid shit sale. They ain't going to buy more. <laughs> They're going to go out in the parking lot and stuff this stuff into the big, fat, ugly, oversized SUV that's got plenty of room in it. Plenty of room in it for stupid shit and lots of room left over for these big, fat, ugly motherfuckers to get them home. Stopping, of course, for jelly roll and fried dough. These people... These people are efficient, professional, compulsive consumers. It's their civic duty, consumption. It's the new national pastime. Fuck baseball, it's consumption. The only true, lasting American value that's left, buying things. Word. They always throwing stuff at us, but you know what? Hey, sometimes you gotta grab what's being thrown, you know? And use it as a tool. Pause. Buying things. People spending money they don't have on things they don't need. Money they don't have on things they don't need so they can max out their credit cards and spend the rest of their lives paying 18% interest on something that costs twelve fifty. Pay your debt. Don't be a debtor. <laughs> and they didn't like it when they got it home anyway. Not too bright, folks. Not too fucking bright. But if you talk to one of them about this, if you isolate one of them, you sit them down rationally, and you talk to them about the low IQs and the dumb behavior and the bad decisions, right away they start talking about education. That's the big answer to everything, education. They say, we need more money for education. We need more, more, more books, more teachers, more classrooms, more schools. Uh, we need more testing for the kids. And you say to them, well, you know, we've tried all of that and the kids still can't pass the test. They say, oh, don't you worry about that. We're gonna lower the passing grades. And that's what they do in a lot of these schools now. They lower the passing grades. Yo, that, that's just reverse. All you doing is growing a weak nation doing that. So more kids can pass. More kids pass, the school looks good, everybody's happy, the IQ of the country slips another two or three points, and pretty soon all you'll need to get into college is a fucking pencil. <laughs> Got a pencil? Get the fuck in there, it's physics. Then everyone wonders why 17 other countries graduate more scientists than we do. Education. Politicians know that word, they use it on you. Politicians have traditionally hidden behind three things, the flag, the Bible, and children. No mm. Mm. The times we're living in now, and what he said. Wonder how long ago this was. No child left behind, no child left behind. Oh really, well it wasn't long ago you were talking about giving kids a head start. Head start, left behind, someone's losing fucking ground here. <laughs> But there's a reason, there's a reason. There's a reason for this. 
I just caught on to that. Head start, no child left behind. I mean, what's going on over here? Are we pushing? Are we pulling? What are we doing? We just keep throwing them out. There's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. Hmm. Breach. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies that control just about all of the news and information you get to. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. Hmm. Critical thinking is everything. You gotta think for yourself, not with the popular crowd, you know? They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table and figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them <laughs> overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. Obedient workers. They shut up and listen, basically. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your Social Security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. Not By the way, all. it's the same big club they use to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. And nobody right. seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. Good, honest, hardworking people, white collar, blue collar, doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hardworking people continue. These are people of modest means. Continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all, at all, at all. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Yeah, you know? And nobody seems to notice, nobody seems to care. That's what the owners count on, the fact that Americans will probably remain willfully ignorant of the big red, white, and blue dick that's being jammed up their assholes every day. <laughs> because the owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream. The way he talks and he emphasizes like he knows something and he want to tell us more, but... He just says it in this form, man. You know, this guy's smart. Because you have to be asleep to believe it. <laughs> hmm. And that's your boy, George Carlin. You already know my name, Wally. Make sure you follow for some more because I got a lot in store, man. It was nice being here with you. All right, see you again.